Greetings everyone. Welcome to my channel and if you are watching this video you probably began searching for the same thing that I did a few months ago which is how to modify your shelter logic pop-up garage or garage in a box or whatever you want to call these uh, tent structures. So originally I bought mine from Tractor Supply and I read the reviews and I thought okay a lot of people said their uh, canvas top failed after a year and I was thinking mine should be fine um, I'm not in a sunny Texas environment where it sits out in the sun uh, when I first got it I was really religious about getting the snow off it during the snowstorms and it lasted through the first winter but lo and behold after the summer uh, here in Northern California even that was too much for the top and it ripped on top so I thought I'd just go over the modifications that I did to my garage um, I had actually done this before I started uh, filming videos for YouTube so I'll just go over what I did this actually won't be a how-to video per se so here we go so the first thing I did was uh, I folded up these standing seam metal roof panels uh, in my spare time I work for a heating and air conditioning company and uh, do sheet metal work. So uh, thankfully I had uh, the means to fold up these panels. I didn't want the galvanized corrugated panels that uh, you see on some of these other videos because uh, I just don't like it that shiny. So what I ended up getting was a uh, bonderized sheet steel. I kind of like the gray look that it has. As it starts to weather, it gets a little chalky, so it kind of makes it almost look a little rustic. Um, I used this product on a wood shed that I built last year uh, on a metal roof, and uh, it looks fabulous. And I'll put a little shot of that in there just so you can see what that looks like. So my shelter logic tent is the pop-up garage, which is eight feet wide by 10 feet long. So the standing seam panels were fabricated from 10 foot long sheets of bonderized 24 gauge metal. And the reasons I ran the seams horizontally is as you start to go up the tent, it curves and uh, although i work for a sheet metal shop we don't have a machine to do those standing seam metal roof bends that uh, the professional roof installers uh, have to make those curves when i fabricated the standing seam panels i slit the pieces into 16 inch wide flat stock uh, that way i could fold them up so it's the panel started with a one inch raw edge standing up and then 13 inches of flat and then I turned up an eighth of an inch uh, straight up and then seven eighths of an inch to roll over to make the standing seam and then I just secured it on those frame poles that go up and over from the original uh, tent structure using those uh, self-tapping screws with the neoprene washers. And I just did three screws per panel so uh, to secure it. And it has been plenty strong. It actually makes the structure more structurally sound in that, like a horizontal shearing. So the, uh, the tent actually doesn't move as much as it used to when the wind blows, etc. The other thing I did while securing the panels with the self-tapping neoprene washers was I actually marked and pre-drilled the holes to a little bit smaller uh, diameter than the screws. I thought maybe those shelter logic tubes might be a little too much for the self-tapping screws with the neoprene. So by drilling a little pilot hole, it made it much easier for those screws to go in. 
So here's a close-up shot of the standing seam connection. Uh, once I had it all together, I took my sheet metal tongs and then of course I, I crimped this all down nice and tight. So uh, it would be waterproof. So once I got the panels all installed on the outside, I came back in on the underside because I was worried about the snow load crushing the panels because it, it is five feet from uh, this pole over to the center pole and another five feet going back or just under five feet. So uh, what I did, I went to Home Depot, got the metal wall studs in 10 foot lengths. And if you uh, cut them just right, it'll give you enough length to fold an inch and an eighth right there and then of course i just used the self-tapping sheet metal screws to hold that in and i basically put those just around the arc on the top where my snow load would land and as you can see where the roof structure bolts together I ended up having to notch the metal studs in order to get them in and then screw them in. And basically I ran the metal studs down the middle of each standing seam panel. So uh, there's a standing seam which sticks up on the outside and there's another standing seam there. And so I figured that's nice and strong but I didn't want the middle to oil can or crush in. And so I ran those metal studs right down the middle of each of those standing seam panels. So I would have extra support. So originally I was worried about the snow load on top because of those standing seam edges that it might hold the, the snow, etc. Well, basically what happened is the snow piled up just kind of around the top in the shape and uh, the structure was strong enough with those supports in there that nothing crushed. Uh, we had a snowstorm here in Northern California two weeks ago that uh, left us with two and a half feet of snow where I live when I woke up in the morning and nothing happened to the structure and it held up with the original supports from Shelter Logic and those added wall studs that I got at Home Depot. Hopefully this gives you some ideas on how you might be able to modify your shelter logic canopy so it could last more than a year. And I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.